This is Twit. It's time to talk automotive technology with Sam Abul Samit, principal researcher at Guidehouse Insights. He does that great Wheel Bearings podcast at wheelbearings.media, and we are fortunate to have him join us every week to talk automotive. Hello, Sam. Hello, Leo. How are you this week? I am well. You are sitting in front of a beautiful vehicle today. What is that? Yeah. That is the 2023 Cadillac Lyric. Uh, so this is the beginning of the transformation for the Cadillac brand. Um, by by the end of this decade, and perhaps even sooner than that, um, GM wants Cadillac to be all electric. Um, I remember being at a, at a luncheon with uh, the former head of the Cadillac brand uh, at the end of 2019, uh, just before things went all sideways. Uh, it was Steve Carlisle, and he said, uh, "You know, this is this is the end of the ice age for uh, for Cadillac." And so the the Lyric is their first EV. It's built on GM's new Altium uh, platform. So it's going to use the same type of same batteries that are going to be in the Hummer EV, uh, which is actually. Uh, supposed to start production uh, first first vehicles off the line uh, next month in October. Um, and uh, I guess if you're going to drive a Hummer, at least you could drive it without guilt if you drive the Hummer EV, right? E exactly. Well, you know, I mean, when the thing weighs 9,000 pounds, I don't know how guilt-free it's really going to be. Uh, you know, fortunately, you know, it's the Hummer is really going to be a niche vehicle because, yeah. you know, it's, it's going to be $115,000. Um, you know, it's, it's not going to sell in huge numbers. I would be surprised if even when they launch the lower cost versions that get down as low as I think about $85,000, if they sell more than 10,000 a year, but the, the Lyric is really a more mainstream vehicle for Cadillac. You know, it's right in the heart of where the luxury market is today you know, in, in mid-size to upper mid-size crossovers. You know, it's a, it's a two row uh, five seat crossover, uh, similar in size to um, the, or actually slightly bigger than the Cadillac XT5 that they have today. Um, and I got to spend three hours on this past Wednesday morning at the GM Tech Center with members of the team that have been developing the Lyric. Um, and so this vehicle go, is scheduled for production in February. Um, it's going to have a, a 300 mile, at least a 300 mile range, they say. Wow. And uh, it uh, the the launch edition that uh, comes out in the spring the first the first version of it um, is going to be rear wheel drive uh, 340 horsepower electric motor but um, I learned some really interesting details about this vehicle um, as we went through that we spent some time in the design studio and I spent some time with the engineering team and uh, uh, you know one of the things with with an electric car. Uh, because you want to you want to be able to maximize the amount of regenerative braking you can do. You, you want to recover as much energy as you can whenever the vehicle is slowing down. Uh, and so, um, you know, one of the things you don't want on an EV, it's especially important on an EV. It's important on any vehicle, but especially an EV, is you you want to minimize aerodynamic drag. Mm -hmm. And because the, the more aero drag you have, you know, then when you lift off the accelerator, the air is slowing you down instead of ah. um, being able to use your regenerative braking ah. to recover that energy and put it back in the battery. So it's not just to make the battery more efficient, but it's also to give you better regen. That makes sense. Yeah. 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 So um, one of the, the neat details, um, several years ago, GM built a, a new wind tunnel. Uh, GM's had a, a full size wind tunnel since the 1980s, but they rebuilt their wind tunnel and they now have what's known as a rolling road wind tunnel. And this is an idea that actually started in Formula One back in the 80s um, when they came to the realization that um, the, the way air flows over a vehicle can actually change quite a bit if the wheels are turning versus if the wheels are static. So if you just take a car and stick it in a wind tunnel and it's nothing's moving except the air around it, the results you're going to get are going to be quite different than if the wheels are rolling the way they would be when you're moving down the road. Oh, uh, of and, course. You know, so Formula One teams have had like one quarter, one third scale rolling road wind tunnels for, <laughs> for many years. Is it a treadmill? Uh, but this essentially, yeah, it's like a giant treadmill that the car sits hmm. on. So they roll it in there, put it on the treadmill and it moves. So you have a moving ground plane and move and the wheels are rotating. And that changes the way the air interacts around the wheels. 
And one of the the neat details that they learned when they were developing the lyric is when, if you look at your tires on your car, you will find that like around the edge, uh, near the edge of where it goes from the sidewall to the tread, uh, there's usually a ridge that's molded in there. And there's various other aspects of the sidewall that when the tire is rotating <laughs> actually creates a surprising amount of drag. And uh, so what GM did was they worked with their um, with their tire suppliers to rework how the tires are molded to eliminate or, or minimize those ridges along the sidewall. And that was able to get them um, of what the roughly um, ten, they say what they refer to as 10 counts of aerodynamic drag. So the, the drag coefficient of a vehicle is on a, tip, on a typical modern vehicle might be anywhere between 0.25 and 0.35. Um, and, you know, 10 counts would be uh, 10 one thousandths of that. So it might be like going from 0.27 um, to 0.26. Uh, which is a, a significant difference for you know something that um, once you figure out how to do it doesn't actually cost you more. Uh, so, and that makes it you know, on an EV that makes a real difference. Another detail that they did is on the the rear hatch on the rear glass. Um, you know most crossovers SUVs and so on. You'll find there's a, a windshield wiper or there's a wiper back there to keep it clean. Mm -hmm. Well, one of you know that adds weight and it also adds drag when the air is flowing over that. So what they have on the Lyric is the spoiler at the top of the, the tailgate that is a flow-through spoiler. So they've designed it in a way so when the vehicle's moving, the airflow through there is basically sweeping everything off that rear glass. Hmm. And so they, they claim they won't need a windshield wiper. So that reduces the drag, reduces ah, the weight, reduces the cost. Interesting. So we'll see how well that part actually works in yeah. the real world when you know yeah. when I get it in a rainstorm or a snowstorm. But it's it's a you know it's one of those neat details. One one last arrow detail. If you're if you're watching the video, you'll you'll notice on the doors what looks like handles. They look like and, Tesla handles, yeah, to be honest with you. They look like Tesla handles. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, because they're they're flush mounted with the sheet metal. Yeah. But unlike a Tesla handle, you walk up to it, you touch that, they don't pop out. Um, it, in fact, it's just a, um, a touch surface and it actually, the, the doors on the Lyric have the same kind of door presenters that you have on your Mustang Mach-E. So there's a little piston on the inside. So you touch that and it pops the door out a couple of inches and then you grab the edge of the door and open it. So it looks like door handles, but they're actually not. They're just a, it's just a touch sensitive surface. It's like my, uh, my Mustang, which just has a little dot yeah. on it. And then you grab the yeah. door to open it, which seems like a it's, kind of it's, primitive. It's, exact, but <laughs> it's exactly the same mechanism. Yeah, that's clever. So it makes people feel like yeah. they've got handles, but they don't. On the Tesla, they right. actually pop out and you can pull on them. Uh, but that seems like a lot of complicated. Yeah, that's not the always. problem. It's electrically complicated. It's probably better just to unlock the door and let you open it with your hand. Cool. Yeah. Cool. I have a little, the driver's side has a little uh, little hook to pull on. They didn't do that for the back seats on the on the Model E. Well, very yeah, they, cool. They got, I think this. away I, with that on the. They got away with that on the Mach E because that 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 little hook is within the the wake of the driver's side or the wake the of the side mirrors. Yeah, so yeah, it doesn't yeah. actually interrupt the the yeah. airflow there. It's really interesting. They put so much effort into just the tiniest increase in aerodynamicism. Ooh, now we only have thirty seconds left, but you're showing the interior now. That is a big screen, and I don't mean big it's like Tesla inch big. It's curved wide. LCD display. It's like goes across the on whole the dashboard. dashboard. Wow. Yeah, almost all the way, about two thirds of the way across from uh, from the the driver's side A pillar to past the center console, uh, and it's all one continuous screen, unlike the like the Mercedes Hyper screen, which is actually three screens. We'll hidden save under that G for for next time. Sam Abul Samad, principal researcher, Guidehouse Insights. Thanks so much. My pleasure.